And we are live, and we have a lot to talk about, man. It's the end of the year, but we have a lot to talk about. And what kind of a question is that? Does Alan have anything to talk about? He's so happy that our other attorney is not here, Adam Handler, you know? We're gonna get everything in today, I'm, I'm quite well, sure. That, well, that was my point, you know, when, uh, when the case handler is here, you know, can't get a word in, so uh, <laughs> he, he takes up the majority of our time. So I was just want, want, making sure that the general had plenty of uh, information to fill in the gaps with, you know? Anyway, good morning, by the way. Hope everyone had a nice weekend. Yeah, good, good morning. morning. Alan, you good? I'm good. I hope you're good. I am great. I am great. We're anywhere I'm at, but it's been pouring for hours, you know, but everything is good as far as the internet is concerned. I was a little bit worried about it. it happens in this region of the world, but we're here. It's Monday. It's the last week of 20. 20. I don't know if anybody saw, um, there's a, there's a show on Netflix. Conrad would, would really appreciate it. Um, it's called, uh, I have to look it up. It's like, it's the last of 2020 or 2020 the year or this 2020 with Samuel Jackson and some features on your boy, the orange man and some features of what took place in 2020 highlights of it but they did it in a very comedic way. It was, I thought it was extremely interesting, very interesting. So you all should check that out. But this show um, is brought to you by the law firm, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and the sequel. The only law firm that you will ever need listeners or viewers on Facebook, 93.5 FM listeners. We're here. We're going to be talking immigration today exclusively. Adam Handler is off somewhere. Um, and I'm quite sure he'll be back tomorrow or the following day, full force. All right. But we're here. Nope, to I think uh, I think the case handler is taken off the entire week. Really now? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Last last I heard, there was some big construction project somewhere down on one nine in uh, southern Jersey, and he just camped out there, just wait waiting for the inevitable. You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just yeah. kidding. Just kidding. What? But here we are, 93.5 FM listeners. If you can tell your friends that we're on or text them and let them know that they can bring their immigration questions to Facebook, my page, David Squeezanicky, or the firm's page, Pollock Pollock, Isaac and Dececo, that's PPID, or even Adam's page, because we're on it, the case handler. We got a lot of questions that uh, we're going to be answering and we want to get yours in also. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, on Facebook, we're going to ask you, the only thing we're going to ask you this week is to share the page that you're watching to at least 20 of your friends. That's it. Share it to 20 of your friends or more. All right. With that said, we're going to get into the immigration news slash update by the general himself, Alan E.K. Hopefully he had a great weekend. And of course, this week is the last week for free phone consultations with the firm, free phone consultations with the attorney. So if anyone out there would like to get a free immigration get a free consultation by way of you asking your immigration question. This week is the week to get it in. Don't wait until Thursday. Call them now, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. For almost one year, we've been doing free phone consultations. The firm has been extending free phone consultations. They have been speaking with you about different areas of the immigration law. Donald Trump is exiting. No matter what he says or thinks, he's leaving the White House come January 20th. That's it. Bye-bye. Finis. Finit. Bye. Get out of here. That's it. Done. It's time for a new wave. Okay? A good wave. All right? We can serve this one. We can hit this one. That's what's going to happen. So once again, if you have your immigration questions, call the firm. Get them answered for free now. The number to call is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Welcome to the show, Cruising with the Case Adler, a show today on immigration. Bring all your immigration questions now. And remember, don't let the year end and you don't ask your immigration questions. Ask the attorneys. 844-774-3529. I like that name. Ask the attorneys. Tell Adam we're changing the, uh, the name of the show, uh, guys. We're you know, going we'll to change it to Ask the Attorneys. All right? All right, Alan, it's all yours, man. What's happening in immigration as we end the year 2020? Okay. Well, we've got a lot of stuff. Now, uh, we've, every program we've mentioned about how uh, immigration has pushed back 
the date for the hearings, for removal hearings. Now, if you're detained, this doesn't apply to you. If you have a date for a removal hearing, it doesn't apply to you. But if you have a removal hearing and they haven't given you a date yet, they keep pushing the date back and back and back and back. The latest date where they might be giving dates for hearings is January 8th, 2021. So if you have a removal proceeding, it's going to be coming, but they don't give it, haven't given you a date. You're not detained. You won't hear anything until January 8th, 2021. Now, there are 1.3 million cases pending, removal cases. And that's maybe why the date keeps getting pushed back and back and back because they can't handle, obviously, 1.3 million removal cases. The interesting thing is this, is the number of cases pending before U.S. immigration courts has gone up nearly 50 percent under the Trump administration, 50 percent more than previously. And that may be why they keep pushing the date back and back and back. OK, now we've mentioned on, in the past that people have been hearing on the radio <clears throat> from lawyers and non-lawyers, all kinds of things come to us. We'll do this. We'll do that. And half the stuff they're talking about cannot be done. And they're just going to rip off your, rip you off. So be very careful about what you hear on the radio <clears throat> from people who are not lawyers, or maybe they're lawyers, and maybe they're not. Be careful what people are pr promising. And if you hear something that's very funny, and you, it sounds a little peculiar, <clears throat> get in touch with PPID. We'll let try me, to set you. We'll set you straight. Let me let me jump in on that. Let me weigh yep. in on that right now. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I am David Squeezanakin. I've been doing, you know, um, this radio program since 1996, and we've been, you know, speaking with attorneys from then until now. And we have heard the horror stories, seen the horror stories, and I can tell you that. What Alan, the general, the attorney at PPID just said, the man probably who has the most experience in immigration law, as just said, is actually true. I urge you. Okay, I implore you. One, I always say, do not do it yourself. Two, definitely, you don't want to go to the go to the lady on the corner um, down there in, at Gun Hill or in Eastern Parkway or Sutpin or those areas. You don't want to go to all these people. People out there are now going to try to take advantage of you because Biden is coming in power. People are going to come up with all these the stories and things to tell you, hey, we can do this, we can do that. Don't, and I, people know I can be very unorthodox. Don't get screwed, don't. Pick up your phone, call PPID, speak with them, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, their number is 844-774-3529. I really wanted to weigh in on that. Don't let anyone work on your case. You get it over to PPID, let them deal with it. There's a lot of scams going on. And we don't want you to get caught up in that, lose your money, probably get put in removal proceedings and you, you get kicked out of the country because you didn't listen to Squeeze. You didn't listen to Conrad and you definitely didn't listen to Alan. So start listening, please, for you and your family and your um, staying in the country. Call them at 844-PPID-LAW. That's 844-774-3529. I will let the general Alan continue with his um, immigration news update. You may continue, Alan. Sorry about interrupting you, but I just wanted to okay. emphasize on that. <clears throat> PPID lawyers are available to lecture to your community groups, to your church groups, to consulates. And we've been lecturing to, we lectured to the Jamaican consulate in uh, for a couple of hours. We're gonna be doing it again. We have some lectures coming up in January for some other consulates. So if you have a community group, a church group, consulate. We'll be happy to come and do a lecture for you. Uh, well, actually, it'll be on Zoom, so you won't have to come anywhere. All you need is a computer, and we'll be happy to set up a lecture to your group. Okay, next. There have been delays in people getting receipt notices from USCIS. So if you filed something and you still haven't gotten a receipt notice, on December 15th, CIS announced that it, it's experiencing delays in issuing receipt notices of petitions and applications that were filed. And they say that the delay is due to a significant increase in filing fees. 
combined with COVID-related limitations at the CIS mailroom facilities. And in addition, the United States Postal Service is also experiencing delays in mail delivery because of limited staffing capacity and increased holiday mail volume. So USCIS says you should have a receipt notice within 30 days of filing. But because of these delays, your receipt notice might take six to eight weeks to be delivered. Now, if you haven't heard anything within six weeks of filing, contact PPID and we'll, we'll see what we can do to help you and find out what happened to your receipt notice. Okay, next. Some people have had appointments scheduled at the American consulate, Jamaica and other consulates in the, uh, around the, uh, the Caribbean. And a lot of the people who have had appointments have had those appointments canceled. And so that's good. People who have booked an appointment in early January don't expect that these cancellations will end because they're still having staffing and backlog problems at American consulate. So, Alan, yeah. along those lines, is there any any word on um, the travel ban? You know, the travel ban is supposed to expire this Thursday. Um, yeah. So that's that's a major uh, date for a lot of people that are listening to us because you know that travel ban affects pretty much every type of immigrant visa out there other than uh, spouses of U.S. citizens and, and little kids. So, and the question is whether uh, Trump is going to extend the travel ban before he leaves office. And in which case, if he does, does extend it, it's going to take some time for Biden to remove the travel ban because Biden has said he would remove the travel ban. But in the meantime, Trump is going to be around for a little while and he can do a lot more damage as you see he has been. I, I was searching this morning to see if there's been any word or any developments in that regard. I don't see anything. I guess he's... Uh... It's been too busy playing golf this weekend to uh, to focus on such things. Yeah, the only the only good thing is that we were waiting to see whether Trump would sign this big bill, and if he didn't sign the bill, it would affect immigration activities. Oh, he and, signed. So. And he he signed this as one bit of good news from Trump that he signed the bill, and so immigration won't be affected by that. You know. I mean, what was, I, I was, you heard about that last night. What was the point of all that, of the drama? You know, first no, he says, I'm not going to sign it, the pork and this, and I want 2000, even though the 600 was his administration's idea. You know, it's like, and then all of a sudden on Sunday night, well, I changed my mind. You know, yeah, I'm the, answer, the answer is one word, chaos. Trump <laughs> like Trump yeah, meanwhile, life. all these people, their unemployment benefits expired the other day, and it's like people are wondering how they're going to pay their rent, and this guy's out there playing golf, and he decides, you know, I guess after we watched a little football uh, last night, ah, you know what, what the hell, I'll sign it. What a way to run a country, huh? It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, well. Really. I mean, Alan, really, if we, if, we, if we ran the firm like that, well, you know what, maybe I'll pay the staff this weekend, but I'll, I'll, I'll hold them, I'll, I'll wait the weekend to let them know. <laughs> Maybe we'll pay. Maybe we won't. Yeah, he, and he's got a little bit more time for for his favorite activity, which is called chaos. Okay. Now, you know what? Well, what are we gonna uh, July? Uh, come January twenty first. What are we gonna talk about? You know, well, we're gonna what talk are, about only good things. And I'm gonna and, I'm gonna have to find a new foil. I'm gonna have to find somebody new to uh, to criticize. Although I'm sure he's not gonna disappear. It'll be same funny. Whatever CNN thing. is doing, you're gonna have to do that because I don't know what they're gonna do either. It'll take <laughs> a long, take Biden a long time to undo some of the Trump. Uh, yeah. Some he can we can talk about that in a little while about what we can expect from Biden. But in the meantime, a federal court judge, Judge Nicholas Garifus who I've met, as I mentioned before, I know, I've met him before, I knew him, I've known him since he was a kid, I've known his mother. Judge Garifus has required USCIS to accept new DACA applications. So if you qualify for DACA and you haven't filed for it yet, find a lawyer and apply now to do it and we will, CPIB will be happy to do it for you. Don't, no, 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 no. 
So if yeah. you have not filed it yet, you call PPID. You don't find a lawyer, Alan. You call PPID. I, the next sentence was, find a lawyer, call PPID. <laughs> find a lawyer at PPID. You know, well, you know uh, along those lines, I, I, I mentioned last week, we, uh, we had a client that came in in exactly that scenario because, you know, most people that, are, that were eligible for DACA applied. I mean, it, the program's been going on for years. Most people are really more just interested in their extensions. But we had a gentleman walk in the door last week, uh, referred by another client of ours, um, who uh, had applied previously, but he had a criminal issue. He either filed a loss, he filed on his own, I believe. Uh, and the application ended up getting denied, came into us just to get a second opinion. And sure enough, the criminal matter that led to his denial the first time around was wrong. And if he had had a lawyer, if he had PPID as his attorneys, it would have been reversed and we would have gotten him DACA and work authorization a long time ago. So he came in and we are now preparing his, his it, it's treated as a new application because he was never approved previously. So basically this new provision, uh, or rather this new ruling by the uh, U.S. Uh, District Court allows this gentleman to apply for DACA again. Uh, and really? I guess he heard the news and he came in to see us and we're in the process of doing it. So, you know, it is it is feasible. So if you had a case before and filed and it was denied for whatever reason, you're eligible, right? Assuming, of course, that you really are eligible, but you can certainly try to file again. So the question is, what do you have to do to qualify for DACA? Well, you must meet the following criteria. You must be born on or after June 15th, 1981. You must have come to the United States before the age of 16. You must have been in the United States on June 15, 2012 and still be here. No proper immigration status as of June 15th. You didn't have an immigration status as of June 15, 2012. You must be a high school graduate or enrolled in high school at least or received a GED or enrolled in a GAD program and be, or be honorably discharged from the U.S. military. And By the way, let me, just, let me just interrupt you for a second there, Alan. Um, with regard to the high school education, we have had clients that came in that had not gone to high school, that didn't have a GED, that didn't qualify based on that provision. However, they then enrolled in high school or they then applied for their GED, right? Those people can qualify. So even if you didn't have the GED, Yesterday, if you have it today or next week, you qualify. Yeah, and the last thing you have to have is, and Conrad is going to touch on this, no significant criminal record. So significant is the important word. Okay, now. Yeah, just along, uh, again, getting back to this client we had la uh, that came in to, to retain us last week. Um, he had, it was, um, it was a domestic abuse matter with his girlfriend and um, he wasn't convicted. It was just he paid a fine or, or I forget the, the exact details, but it was a minor, uh, uh, it was a minor violation. And again, the when he applied on his own, the immigration service denied it, denied the application based on that. But I, in my opinion, they denied it improperly and we're going to reapply and he's going to be successful because the thing, I, I wasn't dismissed, but it was a minor provision. I believe it was just a violation. He paid us a hundred dollar fine or something like that. Done deal. So he qualifies. So the severity of the crime involved uh, will or could have serious ramifications, good or bad, depending on your circumstances. Obviously, if it's felony, you know, if you're convicted of burglary or something like that, you're not going to qualify. But if it was something minor, maybe uh, you know, well, I was going to say DWI, but DWIs are treated much more severely now by the immigration courts. Um, but, but you but know. It's Relatively minor yeah. minor issue, you could get by possibly. And they should call it. Whether or not it's minor or not, let the attorneys decide whether it is. All right? Let the attorney review those dispositions. And that's well, someone might think, someone who was arrested or convicted or pled put out, they might think it's a minor issue, but under the immigration law, it's not. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And we see that often. You know, so now, it, it's important that you all have a consultation with the firm or just hire the firm if you've got a situation. Call them, you know, their number is 844-774-3529. Maybe you wanna know if you can still file for DACA with the uh, change that recently happened. You know, maybe you wanna find out, you know, uh, maybe you filed years ago and there have been changes. Hey, go with PPID, give them a call, 844-774-3529. And 
many people, Conrad and Alan, have been told so much junk and so much garbage by yeah. other people out there. And, you know, they're sitting around waiting for some magical thing to happen when they could potentially get help. And that's the reason why I say to them each and every single day, just call PPID. I mean, what do you have to lose? Call them at 844-PPID law. You're about to say something. There's you know, another, another aspect of DACA. You know, if you have DACA you, and you, have, you can demonstrate an emergency, you can get authorization to travel, leave the country. And that is particularly relevant if you're married to a U.S. citizen or you otherwise qualify to get your green card based on some other process. Um, if you, when you leave the country with, with what's called advanced parole, that's the permission to travel out of the U.S. When you return, it's as if you entered legally with a visa. And if you're married to a U.S. citizen, you can apply for your green card and get your green card here in the United States. Most people under DACA came in illegally um, and cannot adjust status regardless of who they're right. married or family. Right. But, but, it, but with DACA, you can get permission to travel, advanced parole, return as a parolee. And oftentimes, depending on the, uh, on the circumstances, you can use that to get your green card in the United States. That's something that's important also about DACA. Yeah, I was going to mention, uh, continuing with DACA, as Conrad has said, that DACA people would be eligible for travel permits. It's called parole. And some of our DACA clients and some other who are not our clients yet haven't seen their family at home since they were little kids. And now they might be eligible to get a travel permit and go home and see their family. It's called advanced parole. Now, also, the judge's order required USCIS to issue work authorizations under DACA for two years. The previous policy was one year at a time, but now they can get work permits for two years. So it's a lot of good things because of this judge's order. And if you haven't filed for DACA, come to see us and we'll help you with that. If you have filed for DACA, you might want to come to us and it will help you with the travel permit, but we'll help you get two years instead of one year. Okay. Now, let's get on to one of my uh, favorite topics, which is naturalization. And uh, as we mentioned previously, for people that may not have heard it, USCIS has come out with new naturalization question for the test. When you apply for naturalization, they give you a test and you have to talk about, you have to answer certain questions about US government. Now, the idea is they've increased the questions from 100 questions to 128 questions. So if you filed your application for naturalization December 1st or after, you're going to have the new test where you'll, it'll be 128 questions and you have to get 12 right. The old test, which if you filed before December 1st, there are 100 questions and you have to get six right out of 10. Now, these questions are much longer, the new questions are much longer and much more difficult and were probably designed to discourage people from filing for citizenship. One of the, a couple of the good things is that um, if you file for citizenship, there are some, uh, some provisions where you will be a, a little bit easier for you. If you're 65 years of age or older and you've been a permanent resident for 20 years or more, you'll get a simplified test, not 100 questions, a much smaller list of questions, much easier. Also, some people for medical reasons, if they get a letter from a certain doctor on a certain form, will be a, have an easier test or maybe no test at all. So on naturalization, if you have any questions, come to see us, we'll be happy to talk about it because this naturalization, the new naturalization test, really designed to discourage people from becoming citizens, really designed to help people get, get their cases denied. So uh, we'll be happy to talk to you about naturalization, whether you have, if you have not filed yet, if you have filed and you have a test coming up, give us a call. We'll be happy to talk to you about that. Okay. No you know, you know what I'd like to, before I forget, yep. uh, I was, and by the way, folks, the number for the firm is 844-PPID-LAW. That's 844-774-3529. You're listening to the show on immigration law. It's called Cruising with a Case Handler. The Case Handler happens to be one of the partners at the firm. 
PPID. That's Paula Pollock Isaac and DeSico in New York City. Now, I was actually in the gym uh, yesterday working out here at the Ibera Star Grand in, in Montego Bay. And a guy came up to me and said, you're David Squeezanneke. I, I catch your show on Facebook with the attorneys. And I said, yes, I am. He said, my mom has a situation where um, she has a, a child that is under 18 and it's a United States citizen. And the child is with her here in Jamaica. And she has applied for a visitor's visa, she said numerous times. And they constantly turn her down. And I said, you know what, tune into the show. Hopefully she's listening and I let the attorneys respond because it's a visitor's visa, but they can shed some light on it as to why, you know, um, in reference to ties. So I said, I'll ask a question of you guys to respond to her, you know. The problem is that <clears throat> when people go into the consulate <clears throat> to apply for a visitor's visa, the law presumes that they're really an intending immigrant. The law presumes that they're guilty until they prove they're innocent. So right. you walk in the door for your visitor's visa and you got one strike against you already. And because she has a kid who's an American citizen, you know, really it's up to the American consulate. I mean, if they don't like the color of your shoes, they don't have to give you the visa, but it's, right. this is going to be a, this is going to be a hard one. I mean, we can try to intervene. We can try to find out why it was denied. We can try to present evidence to show that it should be approved. But again, keep in mind for a visitor's visa, the law presumes you are really intending to come permanently. So, right. and you're applying for a visitor's visa, but the law presumes you're not. You're really lying. Right. Actually, that's, that's accurate with regard to all kinds of visas. You walk into the U.S. consulate applying for whatever kind of visa, the law presumes that you're an intending immigrant, that you're coming here to stay permanently. In a situation like this, U.S. citizen child of 18 can't apply for the parent to get a green card. But when that U.S. citizen turns 21, they can. And I'm sure that's what the consulate is thinking, that this birth, they're going to come to the United States and... Um, the, the mother is just going to stay for three years and then the son is going to apply for them to get a green card. I'm right. sure that's why they've been denied. It's going to be very hard to overcome that. Yeah. Yep. And I didn't want to say that because I don't give information. I told them to just tune in, you know, um, and hopefully they have heard this. And if I see her on property, I, I'll, I'll say, hey, the attorneys told me this. But once again, folks, if you have questions, you know, give a call. Um, I am more. Uh, about the people who are already in the United States, you're out of status, you have not filed anything, but potentially you can file, call PPID 844-774-3529. If you just have general questions on your status, maybe you have already filed, which you should have actually used PPID, give a ring, all right? 844-774-3529. We're going to the top of the hour, but we are going to continue on Facebook. So all the 93.5 FM listeners, you can switch over to the firm's page, which is Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. Just put PPID in the search bar. They'll pop up. Or you can switch to my page, David Squeeze Anarchy, or the Case Handlers page. And that's the Case Handler. Thank you all so much, 93.5 FM listeners. We're continuing on Facebook. All the Facebook listeners, just share the page with as many people as possible. 93.5 FM listeners, have an amazing day. It's 10 o'clock. There we go. Let's continue. Um, Alan, you were about to say one more thing, and then we can ask some questions. OK. Um, we're going to, we should talk about, and we will in today and in future programs, <clears throat> what are we looking for <clears throat> when Biden becomes officially the president in January? And one of the things President-elect Biden has called is a deportation moratorium for his first 100 days in office. In other words, holding off on deportation cases, except when the person to be deported has a felony. And Biden will quickly submit a comprehensive overhaul of our nation's immigration laws. And I counted up in it what he plans to do in his first hundred days. And I've got 11 different points that he wants to do, including rescind the Muslim ban, uh, protect dreamers and their families by making a reinstating the DACA program, making it more permanent, uh, reverse the public charge rule, which is really a difficult 
problem for people filing for adjustment of status. I've got more, but you know, I want to leave some time for questions. So he plans to do 11 different things in his first 100 days. So we're looking for some good things. And also the new head of the Department of Homeland Security, which takes in CBP, Customs and Border Protection, the people you see at the airports and the border, takes in ICE, the people who arrest you, takes in USCIS, the people who give you citizenship and green cards, is Alejandro Mayorkas, who was an immigrant himself. I've met him. He's a lawyer. He's a very bright guy. And he's planning to really, uh, a quote from Mayorkas, we must bring an immediate end to the inhumane and unjust treatment of immigrants. So that's going to be a good thing. Congress, of course, has to approve his appointment. Hopefully they will. But if they don't, I mean, try, Biden can always make him acting, which is not as good as a, an official appointment. So we're looking for good things for Alejandro Mayorkas. And I can talk more, but I want to leave some time for questions. Thank you so much. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, that's um, Alan E.K. He's um, one of the premier attorneys at the firm PPID. He's got a, so much knowledge about immigration. And one of the reasons also why you should actually go with the firm because they've got that depth. You may call PPID at 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. So each and every single weekday at 9.30 a.m. on 93.5 WVIP-FM. And also, of course, right here on Facebook on multiple pages. Thank you so much for um, actually sharing. I see a lot of people are sharing. We won't want to believe that that's because, you know, uh, our numbers are so high because uh, uh, um, Adam is not here, but just taking a little punch at him there, you know. Um, okay, let's jump to immigration questions. Once again, make the call, share, share, share now. Um, here's the first immigration question. It says here, hey, everyone, I would like, like to ask about something. The e-request. I've been waiting for my approval since August 2019. Can I make an e-request to ask about my approval? I want to know it if it will affect the procedure of my case. You can certainly do that. It's not going to affect the case, but, you know, what type of case is this? Uh, what, what category? Is it a sibling? Is it a spouse? Is it a parent for a kid? You know, or vice versa? I mean, that determines, or that, if, you, if you're able to provide that information, I can tell you how long a case like that will typically take. You know, a, a visa petition between spouses shouldn't take more than six months to get approved. Um, six to eight months, maybe. Uh, but a petition between siblings could take years to be approved. So it depends on the circumstances, what kind of it's case. Not, it's not clear from the question whether he's complaining that he didn't even receive a receipt notice, or yes, he received a receipt notice, but he wants to know when there's going to be action on this case. Okay. All right. Here's another one here. It says, my permanent resident green card will expire within six months and I need to renew it with the A with a I-90 form. But it looks like since my renewal 10 years ago, the INS is no longer um, and has been replaced by an online software company. Should I contact the USCIS? I'm confused because- you Need to file an I-90, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Okay, all right. Simple one, straight to the point. And by the way, folks, you can have PPID do it for you. So all these- complexity and all these questions that's popping up, you need to take the complexity out of it by hiring the firm. 844 oh, Yeah. Go ahead, finish the number and then I'll uh, say what I have to say. 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Yes, Conrad. An I-90 shouldn't take more than six months or so to get approved. Uh, people do it on their own. Often it gets returned. You leave out a, if you leave a space blank in there, they'll return it. I, I see people all the time that try to do it themselves, and they bring it to us a year after the fact. Um, understand if your green if your green card expires, you can't travel. You could have problem get. I mean, although you shouldn't, you could have problems finding work. Uh, so renewing that green card is important. Um, the I ninety seems simple, although it's a lot less sim. It seems a lot less simple than it used to be because. The size of the form has been quadrupled like every other application under the Trump administration. But don't do it yourself. All right? You'll end up paying the price. There you go. All right. Uh, another one here. Hello, everyone. If a petitioner is retired, does that mean he can't support anyone on the I-134 form, affidavit of support? 
because I can't seem to find any information on the form about retired petitioner. Well, if, if the petitioner is retired, I mean, no matter, no matter what, if you file a petition for a relative, where, whether the relative is here or the relative is at the consulate waiting for a visa, you have to show that the, the relative is not likely to become a public charge. Now, if you're retired, uh, you still have to put in an affidavit of support. Um, you still have to show you'll be able to support, but if you, you're retired, you may need a co-sponsor to also help you to show that the applicant won't become a public charge. And now in the United States, you have to do this 944 form, which is multi-page and very difficult, and you probably will need a lawyer to do the 944. You don't have to do 944 at the American consulate, but they can ask a lot of questions also about your ability to support the person you're filing for. So the short answer is, even though you're retired, yes, you can sponsor a relative. Uh, but in terms of finances, you'll probably need a joint sponsor at the end of the case. All right. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, cruising with a case handle, I've got one more question before we conclude. But I'd like to remind everyone, PPID is a full service law firm. If you have anything to do with uh, a legal issue, give them a call. Their number is 844 That's 844 ID L A W. All right. Uh, here's when do you submit proof of domicile for IR one petitioning? I one thirty or affidavit of support. Well, you, if you're filing for somebody, you file the I one thirty petition. The affidavit of support doesn't go with the I one thirty. The affidavit of support comes later after the petition's approved, and it really depends on whether the person you're filing for is in the United States legally, or the person you're filing for is overseas waiting for a visa. So, so the affidavit of support goes later. It's the I-130 that has to be done right away. And nobody's asking for proof of domicile. I don't know where this person is getting that, that, that information from. The Immigration Service does not ask for proof of domicile unless there's something unusual about the case. Absolutely. All right, and uh, final one here, and, and, and one, I see a consistency here where a lot of people are being extremely vague when they're asking their questions. And once again, you know, I say call the firm directly at the 844-PPID, LAW number, all right? So, but if you're gonna ask your questions, please be thorough, all right? Please be thorough, all right? Here's another one. During the petition process, if I move to other country, other country, I'm going verbatim, how can I change the embassy for the interview? Thank you for your advice. That's the question. Okay, you file a petition, and if the person you're filing for is overseas, it says on the petition when you file it, where is the person going to get the visa? So if you put down on the petition that the person is going to get the visa in Kingston, let's say, and immigration approves the petition, and then they send it to the National Visa Center. And when your turn is reached on the line, they will call you for an interview. If you have moved before that, um, you can either leave it alone and so keep the appointment in Kingston, even though you move somewhere else, or talk to the National Visa Center and talk to the consulate about moving the appointment, the appointment date, the appointment from Kingston where you moved, where you put on the petition to somewhere else that you moved to. So you have to request to have it moved and the request has gone to the National Visa Center or the, the request has gone to the consulate where you originally said you were gonna, the person was gonna get the visa. Also the question, is un, the question is unclear as to who is moving. Is it the petitioner, the person submitting the petition right. moving right. or is it the applicant who wherever that person is, is moving. I'm assuming it's the petitioner who's moving. And if that's the case, it doesn't matter. If your relative's in the outside the United States and you move from New York to California, you're still sponsoring that person down in Jamaica, for instance, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you'll need to notify the immigration service as to your new address, uh, the NBC in particular, depending on where the case is at the moment. But the petitioner moving in that situation is not going to make a difference. There you go. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thanks to each and every one for tuning in to Cruising with the Case Handler, a show on personal injury and immigration. Today, we focused on immigration. It's brought to you by the law firm Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. Do give them a ring, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. We'll return tomorrow morning again at 9.30 with more on personal injury and immigration, remember to reach out to the firm, 844-PPID-LAW. Do not do your case yourself. And yes, you can still get your free phone consultations through the end of the week, well, until Thursday, all right? Give them a call, 844-PPID-LAW. Gentlemen, thank you so much as usual for being here and answering the questions and giving all that wealth of information on immigration. You guys are doing a phenomenal job. I wanna say thanks for everything through 2020. Have a great day. Thanks for having us.